All right. Is everybody ready? My name is Emma, and I work at System76, and my talk is about how to make your support cases go faster and end happier. Um, I manage the technical support and customer service team at System76, and our team has a handful of tips that um, we think make our support cases end quicker and happier. And we can describe that with the acronym HAPPY. So as I mentioned, I manage the tech support and customer service team, but my official title is actually happiness manager. And my team are happiness engineers, and the company refers to us as the happiness team. So we specifically don't focus on numbers. We focus on the customer's attitude and the outcome of the case. Um, so I believe customer support is a great job if you're afraid of robots taking over. Um, I think every Linux support case requires human intervention at some point, um, but being human is not as easy as it sounds when you're typing away some of the same commands all day. So one of the ways we achieve um, being human is by putting a customer's happiness in front of everything else. So when we put a customer's happiness in front of the warranty, it feels more human. So we do have a warranty, but it's not the first thing we think about when you open a support case. Um, we include empathy, hope, humor when necessary. Um, we geek out in the ticket. We provide solid information that's tailored to your case. So you can, it's, we make it clear that a human is on the other end. And we feel like that gives people hope when their computer is broken. And part of being human is your attitude. So I think it's important to stay away from negativity at all costs. And when you're typing on a keyboard for some reason, it's really hard to stay away from the negativity. Um, Reddit is a good example. Because um, negativity can derail a support team. Um, that's Thomas. He's on my support team. We like to call him Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, <laughs> whether it's the customer or the representative, negativity is toxic. It really ruins the team's day. Um, it comes out in your support ticket responses, and it's just clear that negative emotions and keyboards do not pair well. I think we're a little too honest sometimes. So we like to keep that out of our, our tickets. Um, it's, it's, it's extremely important to stay positive and to spread it to everyone around you. Um, our team talks about negativity um, during a lot of decision-making situations, uh, especially regarding warranty issues. And we analyze the negativity that the case is causing for the customer, um, for the team, for the company. Um, and it's not weird. So I, if you, it would be weird, I think, if, if you're on a team with, you know, it's four dudes and me, and we talk about how we're feeling a lot, and I don't know any other support team that really does that, but it's important for us to share how each situation makes us feel, um, because the less real we keep it with each other, the more robot we become. And by discussing the negativity that it's causing us, it it's helped us challenge um, outdated industry standards and weird warranty situations that I just, some of us just don't agree with. They're just, they just feel plain wrong. And it's helped our business grow and it empowers us to handle support cases the way we would want it handled if we're in the same situation. And for Linux support, it's important to know your people and that helps us put ourselves in your shoes. So that's another way that we're more human. And being like you and having a team of people like you has been a major factor in providing happier and faster resolutions. And people like humans. So I did this. Um, this talk stemmed from our NPS, which is our net promoter surveys. Uh, we send out surveys every month um, based on if they just got a product or if they just had a support case. 
And in March, there were just, there were dozens of messages and survey responses where they took the time to write about our service and support and use the word human. Um, it, was, it was just an excessive month of using the word human, so that's why I started this talk. Um, but some of the, here's some of the examples. Um, I'll just skip to the end, but that is above and beyond, and support from real humans, top notch. So these are, these are just examples of people that are happy. These are people that recommend our company. These are people that buy again. If I could ask you a quick question. Uh, what's an Oryx Pro? What is the Oryx Pro? Yes. Oh, it's one of our laptops with NVIDIA graphics. Okay. Oh, and love. People use the word love a lot in our surveys. So that's another thing that makes me think the happy approach is working. Oh, and we call people, which some people don't like, don't answer, but the people that do answer really appreciate it. So the A in happy stands for active, but remaining active <coughs> goes both ways with a support case. For us, we prevent tickets from going cold um, because we have a queue system. So the queue system will alert us um, after, if a customer needs to provide information and we can't move forward with the ticket, if it's been a day or two, uh, the system will come in our queue. It'll be obnoxious to us until we make an action happen for the customer. And if a, if a repair has been out for more than three days, then we get a notice. We can't move forward without performing a couple actions. So. Your ticket really can't go cold with the way our system is designed. But you guys can stay active as well by giving as much information you can uh, in the original inquiry. So when you're doing a tech support case and you, you're aware that your situation is hardware related, um, this doesn't really apply in software situations, but when you send in hardware, you have to go through an RMA process. And the RMA process um, is usually assigned by a different team. So that gives you authorization to send your product in so we know what to do with it and can tie it to your support case. And we can't get that unless you provide your serial number and your um, address, your shipping address. So knowing that you're probably gonna need to identify your product, your serial number, and your shipping address is really helpful also if you know what's wrong with your system to just provide it in one message up front. That eliminates so much back and forth that people didn't know, you know, some every system is different, but um, in our system, you have to go through each of those steps. So the way we work around that is by trying to ask all the questions we can in the first message and get the resolution as quickly as possible. But if you guys ever have a hardware case, know that you're probably going to need to provide that information. And once you open a support ticket, um, it's important to not just you know drop it and run and just not talk to us for a long time. Um, it stays in front of us. So I know this is pretty specific to our system, but it we care about our customers. And when you open a support case, we we spend 30, 40 minutes on your problem, and then you just don't answer, it's kind of frustrating. So um, it's important to go back to your ticket and know how to access it. And if you don't know how to get back or when you're supposed to expect an answer, you can just ask questions. Um, I wouldn't be afraid to ask for updates at any point. Never feel like you're annoying your representative because you're not, ever. Um, if we don't have a real update to give you, we can at least keep the case in front of ourselves and have a speedier outcome. So patient. Um, Linux support is very, sometimes it requires the most patience you'll ever have to test yourself with. Um, if you've had a five or six year old uh, kid trying to get them out, uh, out the door for school in the morning, you'll, you'll notice that you know, they're going to change their shoes eight times. 
and then they're gonna come back in a different outfit that doesn't match um, and then they forget their lunch and you know you're, you're breathing deep and you want to just scream at them but you can't because they're a child and you want to be a human and not terrible and that that angry energy if you do yell at them isn't helpful if you notice it doesn't help the situation at all so we occasionally get on one to two hour phone calls where customers aren't typing the exact commands or not quite understanding or just get um, sidetracked and click somewhere else and then the case just goes downhill from there but we can't we can't get mad we can't yell at them uh, we resort to things like stress balls um, we all have little toys on our desk fidget spinners um, we also have a mute button which is really fun to use um, and we also have each other so um, we all have empathy for each other when they're stuck on a two-hour call. Um, so we'll bring each other food and water, and we can transfer if, say, we're if we're not able to get to the solution, or this customer just isn't kind of fitting with how our personality is. We're okay with transferring it and being real with the customer and say, "Look, you know, we've been at this for two hours. I think that." we could try a different approach and get you with somebody else. And I don't think that's weird. I think it's being honest, and I think that's important as well. And as a support representative, we can't really pick and choose the problems we solve, so we have to solve them all, and being patient is, is a great skill to have. Being persistent is also important. Um, with our Q system, we're forced to remain active. Um, so we're going to be sending you messages until this situation is resolved. So we want you to also stay with us, stay persistent with us. If you're not happy with the resolution, keep the conversation going and see if there's any other reasoning you can provide to make the other person understand um, what that your desired or suggested resolution is the best way to go. We negotiate a lot of warranty situations. Um, some people will not give up until they get their way and I really suggest doing that because it works it's exhausting but usually if you're gonna be that persistent about it you're probably right and you can escalate it if you aren't getting the answer that you need and uh, if you're not getting an answer um, but you need to be persistent you need your problem solved giving tech support a phone call is the best way to go um, don't be afraid to get on the phone. And also, writing urgent in the subject field is not shunned upon if you feel like it is. You know, like flagging your emails, I don't think people do that anymore, but it's the same as flagging your email. It's, it's acceptable when it's urgent, and that will get us um, to your case a lot quicker. So don't be afraid to write that in the subject field. And the most important uh, part of this uh, happy approach is that you be you, because you are the most important factor in every support interaction. So be your geeky self, be the person that has to have their laptop fixed immediately, um, the person that needs a loaner, um, anything that you need to get your case handled fast and happy, share that with the rep. and. Since they're human, they'll be able to work with you and solve it the way you want it solved. And we also like to hear about your cool projects, um, and we like to share that with each other. That kind of motivates us to keep going, because um, we're all geeks too, so we want to hear about that all day, and we want to let you know that we are all the same as you, and that we're human. Oh, that's, we're all nerds. That's what that picture says right there. That's your support team here? Yeah. <laughs> so the happy approach is being human, being active, being patient, being persistent, and being you. Any questions? Yeah? Uh, so you talked a lot about uh, discussing negativity and challenging it and trying to avoid negativity. Mm -hmm. What happens when you have to deal with problems that are outside of your control, which happens a lot in Linux. 
Um, we take turns drafting messages. Um, so we'll spend a lot of time on a message and then everyone on the team will have to check, like we use Slack, so um, there has to be a check mark from everyone to approve the message before we send it. Um, so has a lot of different eyes, make sure that we're saying the right thing to make the customer understand and make sure that this response is gonna help them understand that it's out of our control, but you should still be happy and there's an alternate solution usually, so. But there, there's a lot of things that our warranty doesn't cover, so we have a lot of um, wiggle room, I would say. Um, so I think we deal with a lot of situations like that, is how can we go around the warranty to make this person happy? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you uh, had a situation where someone on your team was toxic, and if so, how you dealt with that? Um, we, we did have someone like that. Uh, when I became manager, they were pretty upset about it. Um, so, and it was just kind of, it was just kind of ruining the team. It was bringing us down. The energy was really low. Um, everyone wanted to take vacation days. Now nobody takes vacation days. Everyone works overtime. We're there till like six and seven at night and hang out on weekends too. Um, but that person was let go when it started to affect our productivity and you could tell it affect the attitude because when you walk in the room then compared to now, it's a completely different type of energy. Sorry, the follow up, do you think? Yes. Sometimes it takes time. How do you guys handle that culturally as like an organization? Is there like provision for if someone's having a bad day, they can take a step back and do something else or that kind of stuff? Um, it's usually pretty easy to notice. Uh, we don't really have a policy. It's just our team doesn't work if we're like in a bad mood. If, if I'm upset about something at home, I'm not gonna go to work and bring that energy into the office. And if I'm not able to hide it while I'm typing, then I'm not gonna work that day. And we're totally understandable with our employees about that. Oh, did you have no, no, that was it. No, that was it. Uh, what's your caseload like there? Is it real heavy? Uh, do you find that, do you think System 76 is expanding? Yeah, we, we have um, doubled our support team. Um, in the past two years. So I would say we get about 500 tickets a day between the five of us. So um, it's pretty heavy, I'd say. And some, some cases don't take as long, like simple battery placements and stuff. Um, but some of them take hours or two, like our server ones take a very long time. Mm-hmm. In your team, would you say that someone's personality is probably, if you were hiring, is someone's personality kind of prioritized over their Linux knowledge or their knowledge of support in terms of when you're looking for a candidate or well, the, is it kind of a mix? The, it's a mix. Um, the personality is, is probably the first thing that draws us to uh, people. Um, the Linux support is a plus, um, but usually our personality matches with people that are Linux users. So. I think we're pretty good at magnetizing that type of behavior and personality. Anybody else? All right. Actually, I do have one for you. Oh. Have you actually have gotten to the, honestly gotten to the point where a client is basically ultimately rude to the point that you've actually said no, mm -hmm. and we no longer, well, I don't, well, no longer want to do business with you, and that's it. Cut everything off, even shut their warranty or whatever, and that's it. We don't tolerate people cursing at us. We don't tol tolerate people sexually harassing me. Um, I remember every name of the people that we have actually cut off from doing support for. Um, we've taken laptop returns after six months for customers that are being that ridiculous with us. Um, because it's just not, it, it ruins the day for people and it's not necessary and it's usually, it's always unwarranted. Um, and you, there's no way to make that person understand. So 
in a lot of cases, not a lot, but in some situations, you just have to take it back and say, here's your money back. Please go do business somewhere else. Those aren't easy decisions to make either. They're not easy to communicate as well. Anybody else? Well, I appreciate you guys coming to my talk.